Welcome to Success Is Podcast. I'm your host, Phil Portman, serial entrepreneur, author, and podcast host. Whether success for you is more money, time with your family, a healthy, well-balanced life, or freedom, I'm interviewing guests and getting you the advice to make it happen. So join me as we uncomplicate the complicated, help you define success, and give you the strategies to make it happen. Hello, and thank you for joining us today on the Success Is Podcast. I'm your host, Phil Portman. Joining me today is Wade Thomas. Wade is a successful business coach with a focus on entrepreneurship and small business. A board member for the Arizona Human Resources Executive Forum, a successful author and podcast host. Thank you for joining us today, Wade. Thanks for having me, Phil. Look forward to it. So what does success mean to you? You know, success for me has changed over the years, but the way to find it now is really living a fulfilled life and living life my way. And on one hand, on the other hand is, you know, I really want to help people be their best. And so what I want to do is if I'm successful is I'm leaving this world eventually having left in my wake, a lot of people that have really reached their potential and have, are continually growing. And in the meantime, I've lived my life how I want, you know, I work when I want, where I want, how I want, and um, I just have a fulfilled life. That's great. So what motivated you to leave your corporate job and start your own business? You, you know, it's really interesting because I, I just described what success means to me, but it wasn't always that. So, you know, I came out uh, with a business degree and uh, went ran a retail store for a while, went back on my MBA, and then spent a career really chasing titles and money because, you know, that's what we're taught in business school, you know, and uh, in society in general during that time frame. And so... So I spent, uh, until about eight years ago, spent my career going after the titles and money and was very successful in doing so. But I found out, I woke up one day, it was a series of days, you know, and it just wasn't feeling good. You know, even though I was successful by the definition I had set, I just wasn't, uh, I wasn't feeling right. And so I made the decision, you know, that day to really go a different direction, start my own business and really redefine what success meant. I was at a time in my life where my children were entering, uh, my oldest was entering middle school and you know, I wanted to spend time with them. And, and the great thing was, I think a day after I made that decision, after I walked away from a lot of money, um, cause corporate, corporate gigs pay a lot, you know? And my, my kids said to me, dad, this is the first time we've seen you smile. <laughs> and, and how powerful is that of a, a, how powerful of an affirmation is that? Yeah. I'm kind of, I'm defining success the right way. You know, and since then, um, you know, that's really been driving me and it really, uh, it's been a whole different perspective for me. Yeah, absolutely. No, you know, I think a lot of us think that like, we're going to enjoy life or we're going to reach success at some point. And then you can finally sit back and, and be happy. Right. Yeah. Right. I think that's nonsense. Right. I mean, you, you should enjoy the journey and enjoy what you're doing. And if it's not something you're enjoying, then find something different, right? Yeah, I've, I've always been of the belief that why do I need to wait time 67 and a half, you know, to uh, to enjoy life? That's the old model, right? You yeah. work, you work, you work, and then you retire, and then you have fun. But I don't know how good I'm going to be feeling at that age. Uh, I don't even know if I'm going to be here at that age. And so I want to live life now. And so a lot of people you know, ask, will ask me about retirement and things like that. I'm like, well, I kind of feel like I am retired. Yeah. And, you uh, like you know, do, right? Yeah. I, I like what I'm doing. I'm making a difference and I'm doing it on my terms. And, uh, and yeah, I mean, I, I may be working 50 or 60 hours a week sometimes and, but it's on my terms. It just doesn't feel like work. So I consider myself retired now in a way. That's great. So how do you help your clients define and measure success in their business or career? You, you know, I asked that question, right? I, I don't assume it's growing the business. You know, in fact, uh, I do a lot of work with people that are indeed growing their business and are very successful, but they're starting to hate their business. And so what I do is I, I work with them and I ask the questions, you know, what is it that makes you smile? What is it that makes you get up in the morning on a Monday? Hmm. And, and I will tell, I'll tell you, most of my clients don't say, I'm going to make more money. You know, I, 
I don't hear that very often. You know, it's, it's usually something fun in the job they're doing or some fulfillment they're getting because they're benefiting the world. It's always things like that. But what I'll do is I'll push them on that and, and get an answer because so many times they made the same assumptions I did when I was younger, sure. which was it's all about the money and growing the business and things like that. And, and I'm a business coach. So they assume that's what I think too. But until they're actually asked the question, they don't really think about it. And, uh, and I think that really, that really changes lives for the positive. And, and don't get me wrong. It's okay to make money too. Sure. But you, know, but you ought to have fun. Like you said, you ought to be enjoying the journey as well. Yeah. And you ran into anybody who's like, just hates what they do. <laughs> and had that conversation with them where it's like, man, what are you doing right now? You know? Yeah, absolutely. I, I do see that more when I work with corporate clients, with um, executives that are, you know, they may be a president or a CEO, but they're still on somebody's payroll. So I see it more there, but I do see small business owners that have gotten to that point because they've let the business get away from them. They've been chasing the volume, the money, the growth, whatever, without kind of watching the other side. The good news is, is you can kind of, you can undo that. You can restructure your business. Um, if you're an executive, it's a little bit harder, but if you're an entrepreneur, you can always change your business. And I've seen that a few times where people just said, you know, I don't need to grow this much or this fast. I can retrench my business. I've also seen people change the business altogether. Usually that's before I get there. But, uh, you know, I've seen, you know, one of my favorites was somebody walked away from a, a pretty lucrative position to go and, and do a an outside pet service job. Hmm. You know? Why? You know what? I just want to go out all day and be in the sunshine and, and just do manual labor. Wow. <laughs> it's much better than, uh, you know, the stress I was putting on myself by thinking. Being stuck in a corporate office or something like that, right? Yeah. Or even their own. Yeah. So if you're working with somebody that, you know, stuck in this job, they hate, right? Great pay. Maybe they've been into it for a while. But they're in this position. They're like, I don't know where I want to go. I just know I don't like this. I need some sort of change. How do they? How do they figure out what that is? You know, it starts with having a life vision. You know, the corporations and the small businesses often have visions, right? Missions, visions. You should do that for your life as well. You know, I don't have a preferred way of doing it, but you know, a lot of people will recommend using a vision board. And you know, but basically, what is it that you want out of life? You know, it's a certain lifestyle. Do you want to live a certain place, live a certain way? You know, do you want to put kids through college? Whatever it might be, get that out on something, piece of paper, board, whatever it is. And then you figure out what vocation will fit that. And, and that's, but that's not what we're taught earlier, right? We're always taught, figure out the job first. And, and I say, do it the other way, figure out your life first and then have back the job into it. Find the career the avocation, the business, whatever it is that fits what it is you want your life to become. I couldn't agree with you more. I mean, do you really want to work, you know, 30 plus years, 40 plus years doing something you hate? I mean, a majority of your life and, and re, you're suffering to go to work. Um, for me, what I did years ago, wrote down 100 goals that I wanted to achieve in life. And then broke them down into kind of different buckets, right? So I had my career goal, I had my, you know, personal goals, my creative goals, and things like that. And for me, it was important having balance. Um, is balance something that you talk about with? I mean, especially some of these corporate guys, I can only imagine, right? They have no balance, right? Yeah. Oh yeah, balance is a big topic, and, and you, you're right about the corporate guys. But you know what? I do a lot. Of where I do probably more work with small business owners on balance because so many times they're sucked so much into their business mm -hmm. that they've they basically work in a job now. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And um and, and so so yeah, I do I do a lot of work on a balance thing. I also do work on integration. So, you know, my typical day, I don't know if my typical day is balanced. Um, I think it's more integrated. You know, I, I'm not working nine to five. Um, you know, I'll probably work, uh, you know, I'll get up early. I'll go to the gym, do my exercise routine or whatever it is I choose to do that morning. Maybe start work at eight. Um, you know, take some time with loved ones midday, you know, get back to work, maybe around two o'clock, uh, kids come home, you know, 
536, I'll stop, do dinner. Uh, or maybe they maybe they have a sporting event at three. I'll do that. And then I'll start up again at seven or eight. So it's kind of integrated in, into my life. I couldn't tell you how many hours I really work because I don't know that I ever work like a set routine. You know, I, I adapt the work around the life. And it's easy to do because I'm my own boss. But if you're if you're in a corporation, it's a little bit harder to do. But the reality is, as a corporate in a corporate setting, you're not shutting off the personal stuff. You're still taking calls. You know, you're still taking personal calls at work, and you're still taking work calls at home. And it's understanding that you have that integration, and and having that you know that's true balance. Yeah. So you know, I, the thing I find that a lot of small business owners have is that they're they they can't see the the forest from the trees right like they're just so caught in the weeds of what they're doing and their personal life and business life are just so interweaved with each other that there is no way out right they're taking calls at dinner and they're yeah. you know they're they're all over the place right and that's the thing i really see that small business owners um have is they they their business is all about them and they, they can't have this separation. They can't pull away and the business just ends up consuming them. Yeah. How do you, how do you help somebody like that? Yeah. Well, I kind of look at my own, my own, it was a couple of things. So I look at my own example, first of all, right. So I'm in and out of the business all day, but when I'm out, I'm out. It might not be after five, like the traditional thing says, it might be from two to five. Right. And then I'm back in it. But, you know, I make sure that it's just not happening. You know, I'm Does not that mean to... not answering the phone calls if you're getting right. them and that sort of thing? Yep, yeah. that's right. Let them go uh, to turn voicemail. off notifications. I don't get notifications on text messages. Um, phone calls, you know, I don't know. I, I don't think people use phone as much as they used to. <laughs> <laughs> so, or text messages, biggest, right? Yeah, avoiding text and uh, in email. Yeah. But the other thing I really work with small business owners on is how do you structure it so that the business runs without you? Especially when you're in growth mode, mm -hmm. you, know, you need to bring people in to help. So, you know, early on and, you know, the small business, you don't have the, you know, you're not going to bring out employees, but you ought to be outsourcing things. You ought to be outsourcing accounting. You ought to be outsourcing things like marketing or website, whatever it is that you, you're not good at. Absolutely. Because that sucks up all your time. Um, later on, you start hiring employees. And what I find is there's a mindset shift there with most small business owners they're afraid to hire the employees mm -hmm. because the employees are not going to do it as well as they can and that may be true by the way but you know doing 10 things at 80 percent is worse than doing eight things at 100 <laughs> percent. you know yeah. and so it's important to or better than i should say and then doing two at zero but uh yeah the important thing is for them to be able to let go and get other people to help them. So I do a lot of work in that space. And you know, that involves, you know, how do you how do you hire the people and then have them meet your standards? So I help people work on developing processes, getting the stuff out of their head on a paper so that the business can operate without them. Yes, yeah, so you brought up a few a few different times on, you know, writing your goals and putting those on the paper, right? Writing the structure and getting, you know, that on the paper and stuff, right? It, it that organization right there is is that a, a big component that some of these people are missing that's helping them take them to the next level yeah and for for a couple of reasons one is it creates the inefficiency so they don't have time to work you know on the business they're stuck in the business in the trees like you said yep uh, but the other thing too is until it's down on paper they don't have the confidence to let go hmm. you know because whoever it is they're hiring isn't going to know what to do. And, uh, and so, but once they get it down on paper and they start getting things organized and they can feel a little more confident in handing it off. Yeah. And I, I think there's a part of like, when you write things down, you're kind of organizing your thoughts and, and, and saying, okay, this is the way that I do my business. Right. This is kind of the way I structure things out. And at least for me, it, it, it you know, kind of gives gives me a chance to kind of, I don't know, herd the cats together, right? So everything's not all over the place. And it's like, no, this is really how I define my culture. This is how I define my processes. This is how I define what I do. And 
I think in training others and creating that manual and that written thing, it it kind of helps me structure my thought, my brain and the direction. And at least that's how it works for me. And I'm sure it's probably worked that same way for your clients. Would you agree? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yep. So has your perspective on like work-life balance shifted since leaving the the corporate world and becoming an entrepreneur? Yeah, absolutely. You know, I, I spent... You know, over the last eight years, I spent a lot more time uh, with the kids. You know, I spent a lot more time with family. I've spent a lot more time with me. And, you know, it's just uh, the value I get from that is quite powerful. And like I said, it doesn't necessarily mean that I'm working less hours. Maybe I am, maybe I'm not. But I'm working them differently. You know, I'm making sure that, you know, the times that, you know, are most appropriate for me to to have the me time or the family time, I'm available for it. I'm not stuck at, you know, at an office. <clears throat> yeah. So what advice would you give to somebody who thinks that they need to compromise constantly? Like they say, you know, if, if I want to be successful, I have to compromise time, right? I can't have this and that, right? I, I need to compromise. That's what success is, right? It's trading off something, and I got to have this hustle and grind mentality. And and there's there's always a trade-off for something. There's no such thing as having your cake and eating it too. Yeah, you know, hard work is not necessarily the key to success. You know, that, that's a myth that's been perpetuated uh, probably since Puritan times or before. And, uh, you, you know, it is not. There's a lot of successful people that are successful because of how they work, not how long they work. And mm. so... Is it a compromise? Maybe. But the compromise isn't necessarily, you know, I got to give up the family side or I got to give up the business side. Maybe it is I have to give up being perfect on some of these things. Or I have to give up trying to build my own website, you know, or whatever it might be. Everybody has these time sucks. And, and we could spend a whole day talking about why that is. But, but everybody has them, right? Everybody gets stuck in these rabbit holes that they don't need to be. And a big part of, of the work I do is, you know, talking to people about how do you let go of that? Yeah. How, you know, do you really have to, you know, read all 300 pages of that document before you approve it? Do yeah. You really, yeah. You know, does it have to be a hundred percent perfect before you launch? You know, things like that. Yeah, no, and you know, I, one of the tough things I think, especially for like an entrepreneur, is they, and I, and I had this early on, is I, I almost felt like I was being lazy by giving some of those things off to other people, and I can't remember I, I seen this meme and it was talking about how how like successful people always have this feeling that they're not doing enough, yeah. right? And you, you almost got to like. <clears throat> flip that off a little bit and understand that no that's not you don't have someone rating you on your productivity and and i would even argue that if you're doing a good job of handing those things off you're creating jobs and opportunities for other people right yeah yep and um and so that it was kind of a mental shift that i had to have in my own brain was the that no you're not you're not being lazy you're avoiding getting caught in the the nonsense of 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 what not the nonsense but the the weeds right getting caught in the day-to-day -day activities that keep you from seeing the big picture seeing the trend seeing where your business is moving right and so I, i've experienced that myself in in you know in my entrepreneurship journey but i wonder if you've encountered people who almost feel like they have to validate the time, right? That they're putting into their business. Like, am I putting in enough time and effort? I feel like if I'm giving this up, I'm being lazy. Yeah. Does that make sense? I, you know, I get, I get a lot of that, you know, I, that uh, they just feel that the work is, they've been taught all their lives that the work validates their existence, if you will. And so, yeah, they, they kind of feel guilty, you know, when they're not working. And the other thing I see that's kind of closely related to that is, you know, and I was working with somebody the other day and he said, you know, when I started this company, I, I could walk down the street, I could point to a sign and say, I made that or something on TV. It said, I produced that. 
says, I can't do that anymore because I'm a CEO and I have other people doing that. And I kind of feel empty. And, and I get that a lot. Sure. And, and, you know, it's it's a transition from, for a lot of people, it's a transition from building something to building a business. Mm -hmm. Right. So whether that's something be, you know, houses or cars or ads or whatever it might be. So now you're building a business and, and there's a mindset, a mindset shift that has to happen there. Yeah. You know, and I'd ask you on that. So what, what I used to, when I was one of my first jobs is framing houses, right? So mm -hmm. grueling work, it was awful. You know, you see these four year old yeah. guys, they're, you know, their backs all blown out, knees gone and all that stuff. But one of the rewarding things that I remember about the job is when you got done with it, you'd look back and you built a part of a house. I mean, there was no denying what you did that day. Yeah. And in the entrepreneur world, we don't always have that. Yeah. So how do you help someone see their accomplishments or see the things that they've achieved and and feel proud about what they're doing um, in, in their day to day activities? Yeah, you know, so well, I asked the question, you, you know, why are you in business? Right. And there's usually an answer to that, you know, and then the second question is, why do people allow you to be a business? Mm. Because if as an entrepreneur, you are not creating something that values the world, you're probably not in business very long. Right. Yeah. Right. And, and then that's just a matter of, you know, once they answer those two questions, you know, it starts to become obvious. Yeah. They can see the value that they're bringing to the world. Now, have you ran into somebody who were, <laughs> that's a problem? I mean, they, they say, well, I don't know. I, maybe I'm not. Maybe that's the problem with my business, right? Yeah, I haven't really. Yeah. Um, there's some industries I haven't worked in, which I'm not going to mention, but <laughs> I can see why there might be some industries that would be a problem, but. Yeah. But generally yeah. speaking, no. Yeah. What are some of the biggest obstacles you you encounter with, with, um, you know, entrepreneurs that are are stagnant in their business, right? Not moving forward, maybe they plateaued and they need something to get to the next level. Yeah, I think there's two things that jump immediately to mind. Uh, one is, and we talked about this a couple of times, they're, they're stuck in the trees, right? They're stagnant in the business. Um, business isn't going anywhere just because they're doing the day-to-day -day stuff. They basically turn their business into a job. And uh and so with them, the work is, how do you get out of that? You know, this stuff we talked about, you know, how do you get people to help you? The other one is a lot of times they feel stagnant because they just don't know what to do. To take that next step in a business. You know, they just, they just don't know how to do it or what to do it. And so when they don't know that, they kind of just float along that level or they dive back into the trees, what might have happened. And with that group, you know, that's a group that I work with really to kind of help them understand what's next how do we move forward and it's a pretty powerful thing once they see that path it really unstagnates pretty fast how do you help them figure that out you know i mean i've been in business a long time so a lot of times it's just understanding a stage of growth and you know i have a framework that i use this is what you got to work on mm -hmm. um, but a lot of times it's even inside themselves it's really just asking them you know if you were your consumer what else would you want to see Hmm. right if you're the buyer what other product do you want what other place do you want to be what kind of service do you want and it's really getting them to walk in their buyer's shoes and almost every time there's like a light bulb that pops off there hmm. and then the stagnation is broken but it's really kind of getting through that hump have you run any situations where someone in business is successful and they've lost the motivation because they they're comfortable Sure. Um, now the real, the first question there though, is, is that a problem? You know, maybe they don't need to grow for growth's sake. Mm -hmm. Maybe they've, maybe they've reached what they define as success. Yeah. In which case that's fine. You know, too often we think there has to be, there has to be upward movement. And that's not the case for everybody. So you feel that they, I mean, once they reach that level, they can, as long as they can maintain it, right? Yeah, and, especially if they're a small business owner. Mm -hmm. now, if they're working for a corporation that's paying them to get to the next level, well, that's a different story. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, problem. Absolutely. And for that group, you have to do something to break them out of the comfort zone. Yeah.
Yeah, I agree. Well, Wade Thomas, uh, we appreciate your time today. Uh, for the people listening that want to get a hold of you, want to follow you, how can they get in touch with you? How can they see what you got going on? So one of the great ways to do it is connect with me on LinkedIn. Um, you can find me under Wade Thomas. Um, you know, another way is hit my website, www.aim2nllc.com. And then I'm also uh, maybe to a little bit lesser extent on the Facebook and the Instagrams. And, um, and I'm on YouTube under Heart-Based Leadership. Well, thank you so much for your time today. And, and I want to thank our audience for listening today. And we'll see you guys next time. Well, thank you guys for watching today. Be sure to like and subscribe for more future episodes of Success Is Podcast. If you have any suggestions, please comment below. Look forward to seeing you next time.